welcome you back to the Crustacean Nation podcast on HickoryCrawdads.com. I'm the voice of the Hickory Crawdads, Brian Rushing. So glad that you could join us this time around. If you spent any time at the ballpark or even following the Hickory Crawdads on social media, you know who our guest is this week. It happens to be the assistant GM of marketing, Ashley Salinas. She'll be with us to talk about her career as it relates to the Hickory Crawdads, what got her into baseball, and some of the things that she enjoys most about Hickory, the Unifor, and growing up where she did. All that as we return in just a moment with the Crustacean Nation podcast on hickorycrawdads.com. The Sweet Frog Claw Club is the official club for kids 12 and under. This year, a 2024 membership includes complimentary ticket to every Crawdads home game, a complimentary voucher for speed pitch, carousel rides, and the bounce house each Saturday, discounts, and so much more. Make sure that you get your mom and dad to sign you up for the Sweet Frog Claw Club. Hickory Crawdads Baseball, abide by the claw. And we welcome you to the Crustacean Nation podcast as we have our conversation in this installment of the Crustacean Nation podcast, the assistant GM of marketing here with the Hickory Crawdads, Ashley Salinas. Ashley, thank you for taking some time with us today to talk about the Crawdads and to talk about your career in particular as part of our Crustacean Nation podcast. Good to have you. Yep. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Now, I'm going to pretend for just a moment, even though you've been here for quite a while now and you've become one of the fixtures as far as faces are concerned at the ballpark, for those that don't get out to the ballpark as often as they would like to and so don't necessarily have a connection with everyone here, what exactly do you do? Where did you come from? How did you end up in Hickory? Yep, so I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I went down to San Diego for college. I went to San Diego State and studied economics with a focus on quantitative analysis and then I did um, marketing as well. Um, So marketing kind of sparked that interest for me and then I did um, game day staff for the Padres while I was in college. Um, Happened to be the year that they had the all-star game so that was pretty cool to be a part of that and then kind of realized hey I want to work in baseball but it was never really presented to me as an option with all the sports industry stuff like jobs that there was more than just the athletes on the field kind of the idea that there was a lot of marketing specific people I just had never kind of made that connection and realized how many opportunities there really were out there for people like me who aren't very coordinated so once I kind of did that community relations job and saw how active the Padres were in the community um, I started applying to internships for right after I graduated and ended up in Augusta Georgia I did my internship in community relations, merchandise, and then a little bit picked up marketing along the way there. And then once that internship ended, applied for a couple jobs and landed up here in Hickory on a reference. They were in the same league as the Green Jackets at that time, so um, easy reference up because GMs in the league know each other. So I had never really been to North Carolina and packed up. I had already moved back home to California, so moved. all the way back over here across the country again Um, and that was at the end of 2017 so been here ever since okay so it's it's been some time here Mm -hmm. um in 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 the eastern part of the country um the hickory gig once you get it obviously you had some you had some foreknowledge about the hickory crawdads the hickory franchise obviously being in the same league down in Augusta, Georgia. What had you built a perception of what Hickory was about in your time in Augusta? And once you got up here, what were some of the things that you realized? Yeah, the perception and the reality, not really the same. I have to say I didn't really know too much when I moved here. Um, Kind of being from San Francisco, growing up a Giants fan, the first thing I'd say when my mom found out that I was applying to Hickory she said um that's where Madison Bumgarner's from that's Bumtown because I think that reference was from a sports illustrated article right after the 2014 World Series so that was kind of 
the idea of hickory that my family had was what that sports illustrated article kind of portrayed the hickory area as which moving here now i realize it wasn't hickory itself it was more into caldwell county um in his little part of that but i think it's it's kind of similar to where i grew up in the sense that it's outside of the big city but you you get that small town feel and if for some reason there's something that you can't get in your town you're not too far away from the big city and you don't have to drive in the big downtown okay so that raises a very interesting question obviously you grew up in a smaller town just outside of a major metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, you've spent some time working down with the San Diego Padres, and obviously mm -hmm. San Diego is a big city, and now you're here in Hickory. Mm -hmm. From your standpoint, how have you taken to minor league baseball? Is this one of these things to where this is really good for now and it's going to help be a really good building block for later on when I get into the major leagues or whatever the case may be or is it one of those things to where you kind of think I may have already found my niche in life I'd, I'd say that the last part there I think minor league baseball is truly special in the opportunities that you have to be creative here you know being in the marketing department we get to do those fun promotions those theme nights that we see you know we just had Marvel night where Christmas in July is coming up we get to be involved and come up with ideas around that and then we get to come up with those fun alternate identities and new uniforms. And for us, you know, it takes a couple years to develop something like the Hickory Dickory Docks. But when we do our specialty jerseys, um, like when we did 80s night or the country nights, that's something that we can do in the off season and kind of design ourselves here, which I'm a big part of that. And when you're in the major leagues, you're working through so many different companies and vendors. And, you know, City Connect is kind of like the the equivalent for the major leagues and how many years and it's not really the team's graphic designer that's coming up with that stuff so i think here the opportunity to be creative and expand kind of just off the everyday routine i think is is something that you don't get in the major leagues and i'm i'm love having that opportunity here and being able to be involved in so many departments well, and I think this is one of the things that's truly unique to, to minor league sports, not just baseball, but minor league sports in general. So, for instance, if you come to a ball game and you're looking to see who this Ashley Salinas person is, when you get here about a half an hour before first pitch, there's a real strong possibility that Ashley's going to be down on the field. You're going you're gonna to see Ashley somewhere there. But, Ashley, the job extends far beyond that. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, you talk about the off season you know, having the opportunity to show your creative side, you know, help sort of, you know, spitball ideas and try to see what the creative side of this looks like next for the Hickory Crawdads organization. But when the team's out of town, it's not just vacation time. I mean, there's plenty of things that you guys are doing here at the ballpark. One of those things is setting up merchandise inside the team store. What is, your, what is your role in that, and what's the process look like? I mean, obviously, you set up the store mm -hmm. for whatever reason, the way that you do. How do you come about some of the ideas that you have inside the store and the way the layout of the store is set up? I mean, I think the team store, we only get so much space to work, so I think kind of some of the ideas that we have is have the novelties together and, you know, the, the women's – items together and this year trying to bring in some new designs we had a couple more women's styles than we have in the past years but things are flying off the shelf so a majority of my week so far has been trying to figure out what we have in stock what we need to order and then we're doing a hard physical count this week as well so it's been a majority of trying to catch up on the store and make sure it's good to go because it'll be a pretty busy week next week so trying to get everything ordered and make it look pretty again and then trying to come up with a couple designs in the off season as well and bring it kind of analyzing what sold what didn't sell looking at sales trends we're working with um dbh corporate as well that's our ownership group um they're able to provide some resources and help with that as well now surely you're making mention in these meetings that you have with the front office that if it's flying off the shelves, mm -hmm. it's obviously because of good merchandising and good marketing. You're making sure you make that point, right? Oh, exactly. Okay, okay. Um, I feel like now's as good a time as any because I think 
this particular in a pinch segment is going to be really fun and it's really going to give us an idea of kind of what you go through from day to day because this is a, a roundabout way of the fir- the next question I was going to ask you anyway. So I'm going to put you in the hot seat. All right. Ashley Salinas is now in a pinch. First question, what is your favorite promo day of the year here at LP Fran Stadium? You know, we have a lot that I really enjoy. There's something about the big crowds, especially when you see the Friday nights and you really can kind of lean into the music and get people excited about it. But I'd say one of my favorites is actually not a horrible promotions just because of how much our staff really gets into it. And it's kind of the opposite of what you'd expect when you go out to the ballpark um, because we really truly lean into the corny ideas. Um, oh, okay. So, so we, we did it two years now. This is going to be our third year. Um, last year we were f- national finalists for promotion of the year with it. Um, kind of took all the visiting players, kind of changed up their name a little bit to kind of be a funny version of it. Um, I took their Instagram profile pictures and put those instead of their headshots. Um, we came up with theme music for everyone. Our players were introduced by their first name only. So instead of saying now batting Alejandro Asuna, it's now batting Alejandro and that we just left it at that. Okay. Um, so it was kind of a little different. We played some kids bop um, and some of the the staples of what is considered the worst songs ever. Played okay. A lo- played a lot of those. Um, we okay. Made, we made an announcement, please turn your attention to the field for a special fireworks show. And we had a staff member who went all out dressed in a hot dog suit. She was dancing along to the Katy Perry fireworks. Um, from Just Dance, okay. all of those dance okay. moves. She she knew them by heart. She looked at the screen for the first 20 seconds and then just took it from there and did the entire song. Um, and that was our version of a fireworks show that night. Okay. Um, so just kind of a lot of that stuff, you know, everything that we do in-game, some of the reads we do, the pregame, is just building on the opposite of what you'd expect. Okay. And I think it gets a really good response and built on it from year one to year two, and we look forward to, to doing it again at the end of the season. Plus, it's probably a night that you can use everything that never quite made it off the cutting yep. room floor. You just kind of put it all together in a salad and throw it out there for one night. And and I would imagine the folks getting to, uh, to understand some of the personalities here in Hickory, I would imagine these folks really did get into it. They did. And I think just the response we got on the first the first one, people, especially the season ticket holders, were, that were just kind of used to seeing a promotion run a certain way every day and then all of a sudden it's different and it's not necessarily great it's kind of sometimes it's just kind of lackluster but you still get that chuckle and that's what we are going for and there's no pressure that night because you don't want things to necessarily go well so when we did finish the lyrics (laughs) and it was that might be the line (laughs) of the year well finish the lyrics we had one of them that was the abc's and the guy got it wrong and in fitting fashion and that that was amazing because we couldn't have asked for someone an adult man to get the abc's wrong but he did that's the perfect exclamation point to horrible promotion it was it it worked perfect okay all right now i'm going to take you back home for this next question Mm -hmm. oracle park home of the san francisco giants Better for a day game or a night game? I have to say day game because I went home for a game last year and it was right after 4th of July when we're sitting here going, oh, my God, it's miserably hot and just baking in the sun. And I go home and I'm like, okay, did I bring enough layers? Do I have a couple pairs of socks? Do I have my three sweatshirts? (laughs) And it's... (laughs) <laughs> it's July, and coming from, from here back to San Francisco, because uh, it's not generally too hot there to begin with, but once the sun goes down there and you're right on the water and the wind comes off, you get the chill of the wind, and depending on where your seat is, if you don't have wind protection, it can be pretty cold. I know I've left some games earlier than I wanted to because I didn't bring enough layers. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a question in here real quick. Okay. From your perspective at LP Fran Stadium, better day game or night game? I'd say night game here. I think the atmosphere at, at night, kind of once it gets like to evening, I, I think it's it's a good night 
night stadium. I, I, th- I think you're right. And especially, like right now, it's – it's close to triple digits outside. Mm-hmm. You do not want to have it. You do not want to be playing a day game on a day like this. No, you, you want to push it back as far as you can. Yes, <laughs> no doubt. Okay, next question. This is a true or false question, but I think I did some research on this, and I'm not really sure that this is 100% accurate. I just want to throw it out there and see what happened. One day at Oracle Park, you're in a kayak at McCovey Cove, and it's interesting I may have this story wrong, but I'm going to throw it out there. You're in a kayak during a Giants game, and former Hickory Crawdads player Joey Gallo actually hits a home run at Oracle Park into the water, and you happen to be the one to pick up the ball. True or false? I have to say that one is false. Um, I have not made it out in a kayak um, out there. A um, little cold in, in the water for me, but... I think it's it's an awesome experience to be out there, and you see guys, especially growing up with Barry Bonds era, just the number of kayaks out there was something that made Oracle truly a, a fantastic place and atmosphere. Now, see, now the thing that I – first of all, you can't trust the Internet, okay? But <laughs> but just coming back to this, to me, as, as many kayaks are out there during the game, mm-hmm. I would think probably during batting practice – you'd have tons of kayaks out there because, in theory, you would think that a lot of left-handed hitters would just be hitting one ball after the other out into McCovey Cove. To me, it seems like that there's almost a better chance of getting a ball during batting practice out there than there would be during a game. I would think probably because, I mean, the park opened, I believe, in 2000, and so 24 seasons, and we have 102 splash hits in-game by the Giants hitters. And I think maybe 30 or 40 of them are Barry Bonds still. So not a lot of Giants are hitting them out there, if that tells you anything with that. I mean, obviously that doesn't include the visiting, but, I mean, people, I when it doesn't matter in batting practice, why not go for it? See if you can hit it there. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Last question, and I'm, I'm going off script here. Did you ever have any idea – watching a San Francisco Giants team beating the Texas Rangers for a World Series, that you would one day be working for a Texas Rangers affiliate? I had no idea. Um, I remember I actually got to go to the World Series then. Um, It was my my birthday in 2010, and my dad somehow scored some tickets. So being able to kind of see that and just watching the Giants, I didn't have any idea at that time that I was going to work in sports. And – to now kind of see it and being able to be part of the Rangers organization while they went to the World Series here and watching our manager at the time, Bruce Bochy, be a part, like captain that team is is pretty cool um, to see that. And, you know, getting to to see Bochy at one of the the winter meetings and everything as he was welcomed into the organization, it's, it's kind of cool watching him as a kid, as the Giants manager, and, and now he's part of the organization that I work for as well. Well. I want to thank you for spending some time with me today. Um, this is going to make for a fun podcast, and I, and I really appreciate you spending some time with us. And uh, I have a feeling you're about to become a much more popular person around LP Fran Stadium once they understand a little more about what you do. Certainly, what you do is a thankless job. You do it incredibly well, and we thank you for helping make the contribution that you do for this ballpark, and for this organization. Well, appreciate it, and excited to have you on the broadcast as well. It's, it's been a lot of fun so far. It really has. We come back on the other side of the break. We'll put a bow on this particular episode of the Crustacean Nation podcast. We'll be back in just a bit here on HickoryCrawdads.com. The Sweet Frog Claw Club is the official club for kids 12 and under. This year, a 2024 membership includes complimentary ticket to every Crawdads home game, a complimentary voucher for speed pitch, carousel rides, and the bounce house each Saturday, discounts, and so much more. Make sure that you get your mom and dad to sign you up for the Sweet Frog Claw Club. Hickory Crawdads Baseball, abide by the claw. And we welcome you back to our final segment of the Crustacean Nation podcast here on HickoryCrawdads.com. Of course, the the Crawdads are in Greenville this weekend, taking on the Greenville Drive in a six-game series. The Crawdads Radio Network, with yours truly, will be on Friday night 
Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. Two games, Friday night, Saturday night, 7.05 first pitch. Sunday, a 3.05 first pitch as it's going to be the Crawdads taking on the Greenville Drive from down at Floor Field. Hopefully you'll get to join us on hickorycrawdads.com. Of course, next week, the Crawdads are back in town for three games against the Winston-Salem Dash, the high A affiliate of the Chicago White Sox. Don't forget to check out hickorycrawdads.com to find out more about the promotional schedule for next week's games that include the Independence Day extravaganza happening on July 3rd with a first pitch, a special time of 6.30 p.m. So for everyone here at the ballpark, this is Brian Rushing. Thank you so much for spending a little time with us on the Crustacean Nation podcast. We'll see you next time, everybody. Oh, don't forget, abide by the claw. In the cool Catawba River mist, there's excitement in the air. From Lake Hickory shores across Unifor, it's spreading everywhere. From the young folks to the old folks, it's a feeling they can't hide. Since the crawdads came to Hickory, this whole town's filled with pride. Hometown baseball, it's got a hold on me. Give me crawdads baseball, Hickory's own number one. There's an old rebel spirit in every part of France Stadium. So let's stand and cheer, cause the dads are here and the fight has just begun. And to those who should oppose us, well, let them know this law. When you tangle with a crawdad, you're gonna feel the claw. Hometown baseball, it's got a hold on me. Give me crawdads baseball. Hickory's own number one hometown baseball team. So come out to the ballpark for some good old fashioned fun. Join your friends and family, the good times have just begun. Hometown baseball.